my work on an abstract mathematical object called the monster group. And in the next three minutes, I'm going to explain to you what the monster group is and why we want to tame it. So to begin with, what's a group? Groups can be thought of as collections of symmetries, where a symmetry is just a transformation of an object which preserves some inherent structure. So for example, imagine an equilateral triangle. If I rotate it by 120 degrees, it's the same triangle. So this rotation is an example of a symmetry. And if you take all the symmetries of a particular shape or object, they form a group. And groups are really useful. They're used by physicists and chemists all the time to study molecules and other particles. So wouldn't it be great if we could somehow describe the structure of all possible groups? Well, it turns out that we can. In 2004, mathematicians completed the classification of the finite simple groups. Now, this doesn't quite tell us what all groups look like, but it tells us what the simple groups look like. And these are like building blocks from which all other groups can be made. And it turns out that almost all simple groups belong to just three families. Now, these families are infinite in size, but they obey rules and patterns, which means that we can work with them and prove results about them. However, there are 26 simple groups which do not belong to any of these three families. These are called the sporadic groups. Now, this is absolutely extraordinary. Groups are a natural, simple objects, so for there to be 26 which don't behave like the others is completely unexpected. And we still don't really understand why this is the case. But we're beginning to see the first few signs of a possible explanation, and it involves the monster. So the monster is the largest of these 26 sporadic groups, and it's enormous. It contains approximately 8 times 10 to the 53 symmetries. And these symmetries are of a shape which lives in 196,883 dimensions. Now, whilst all this was going on in group theory, mathematicians in a totally unrelated field working on something called the J function. Now, I'm not going to go into details, but a very important number associated with the J function is 196,884. And when mathematicians noticed that these two numbers were almost the same, they thought it was just a coincidence. But this turns out not to be the case. There's actually a very strong mathematical link between the monster group and the J function. And what's more, the proof of this uses objects and results from theoretical physics. So the hope is that this link, which we call monstrous moonshine, is part of a greater phenomenon linking the sporadic groups to more natural objects and explaining their existence. But even better, this link gives us a powerful new way of looking at the monster. And this is where I come in. I use techniques from moonshine to better understand the monster and hopefully take us a step closer to taming it. Thank you.